into the skin, bounces around inside, and then scatters, and then comes out, picking up some of the tone of the color of your blood. And as a result, when you look at them, um, it looks alive. Of course, there's a lot of pores. Um, your eyes are the windows to the soul, and so obviously the eyes have to look alive. In this particular case, we use a technology called ray tracing to ray trace the eyes. That's why. The eye crystal looks like it's looks like it's alive, and of course, all of the shadows are being rendered so beautifully. You see no triangles, no faceting whatsoever. Triangles have disappeared. The lighting system is so sophisticated we can pick up the little sheen of the oil of his face. Now let's change. Um, let's. I, I love the soft shadows underneath the lips. I mean, it's it's so exquisitely rendered. Photorealistic. Okay, let's let's um, Lucas walk us through some of this stuff. You you, you do some talking here. Let me right. spare a few seconds. Sure. Some of the features of their engine, um, as you mentioned, the the art quality is is second to none. Uh, the textures are amazing, and also uh, lots of little effects. Uh, as we go around, I'll point some of them out. Look at the water dripping off the wall. Yeah, up here. The lens flare. You look at the sun, high dynamic range. Look how bright the brights are and how dark the darks are. Okay, imagine a camera doing this. Really hard time with a camera doing this. Now it's computer graphics doing this. So as you mentioned before, this is trying to simulate exactly what uh, your eye sees. And indeed, uh, they have a feature called uh, pupil adaptation, where they calculate the luminance in the scene. And uh, just like you would uh, if you went from a, a bright environment into a dark environment, if you were outside and ran into a room, your pupil takes a little while to uh, sort of adapt to that. They build that into this engine as well. It gives wonderful effects. Uh, they've got lots of nice um, reflective surfaces as well. So over here we have uh, like a mirror. Uh, we have tiles. Um, the trash can over here uh, is reflecting the rest of the, the room. Now that trash can obviously looks so real because it's somehow simulated in a physically physically based ways so that when light bounces off of it you could almost feel the uh, steel that's um, um, that it's made of absolutely and you can see the water dripping down uh, in the back uh, there and as we come along here there's a, a more uh, sort of plastic uh, posters uh, reflections again off the tiles uh, the quality of the textures is, is unbelievable um, this is real-time computer graphics, ladies and gentlemen, on a little mobile chip. Yeah, and that's tiny. <laughs> and you mentioned uh, before bumpy, shiny. You always have to have something shiny, so uh, this is a nice shiny pipe. Whereas everything else in the scene is, is quite rusty, and somehow this has managed to stay shiny. Uh, the final feature I'll mention uh, just briefly, you see here there's a, a light um, sparking. And uh, they do some very clever things with particle effects. And they actually put physics on the particle effects so that the sparks don't just fly through the wall and through all the objects in the scene. They actually bounce off the wall. And then you can see them uh, pull. But they're them. actually lighting the environment. And they are lighting, yeah. So there's right. a light kicking out. And also the effects come down and then bounce around a little bit, give a nice. So they all become light sources and they cast shadows. And you can just see it. It's fantastic. It's just absolutely exquisite. Now, these little tiny details is what increases the production value of games. And we see this with movies today. There are so many things that they do, the attention to detail, that they obviously don't have to do. They obviously don't have to do. But they do it because they want to create something that is exquisite. And you can just tell now, the engine makes it possible for them to do that. Okay, that's fantastic.